Anna was sitting in her luxury apartment, she was wearing a black cloak as she wrote on her datapad. Other than the light from the screen, nothing else was on. Things had started out pretty good for us, a lucrative military deal for the Anarissa lightsaber, which they had to make less lethal, because too many cadets ended up killing each other, or themselves. Graduating at the top of our promotion, but then, everything changed when the Disnoids attacked. Large bipedal rodents, convinced they should own everything in the universe. They emerged from the Great Void and without warning, attacked our station. I led Red Squadron and promptly kicked their asses, but not before they managed a bombing run on the station. Norris, she didn't make it. Anna stopped riding and took a long swig of a brown liquid in a large glass. The bastards then sued for peace, claiming it was a mistake. They really think we would let this slide. It didn't take much convincing for the rest of the squadron to go rogue, we will show them that peace, peace is a lie, there is only. A hand reached from behind Anna and she startled as it took the data pad, a purple hand. The figure began to read as Anna refused to turn around. Unknown figure, first of all. The Horus took the data pad and whacked Anna over the head with it. Norris, I'm not dead. Anna flinched but didn't say a word. Norris. Secondly, there is no such thing as a Disnoid. She whacked Anna again who answered with a grunt of pain. Norris. Third. She whacked Anna again. Norris. We are out of eggs. Anna was massaging her head now. Anna. Oh come on, that last one was uncalled for. Norris turned the data pad, so the screen faced Anna. Norris. The hell is this? Anna. It's called fiction, I'm thinking of writing a book. Norris. And you killed me off in the prologue. Anna waved dismissively. Anna. I was going to bring you back as a force ghost, don't worry. Norris frowned, she hated that this somehow made sense to her. Norris. How though? Anna shrugged. Anna. Somehow Norris has returned. As a force ghost. Norris then spoke in a teasing tone. Norris. Careful there, that was almost heresy. Anna flushed, not that Norris could see it in the dark. Anna. It's just a placeholder idea, I'll think of something. Norris nodded. Norris. Fine. Whatever, computer. Lights. As all the lights in the apartment turned on, she saw Anna more clearly and broke into laughter. Norris. What, what are you wearing? Anna was sporting clumsy applied red and black makeup, and tiny fake horns were taped to the hood of her black cloak. She got up from the sofa trying to look dignified, which might have worked, if one of the horns hadn't fallen into her drink. As she fished the thing out of her glass, she spoke to Norris. Anna. It helps me write, puts me in the mood. Norris then noticed something else, Anna was wearing a horizontal sheath on her back. On it was the prototype, Anna Rosa's saber staff, which as far as she knew, should still be in the R&D lab. Norris spoke with a sweet and kind voice. Norris. Anna dearest, what you got there? Anna looked at Norris, tilted her head, and shook her glass. Anna. Pepsi. Norris lifted the data pad over her head, and started to advance menacingly towards Anna. Anna put her arms over her head, and began to retreat. Anna. There's more in the fridge. There's more in the fridge. Norris stopped, sighed, and pointed at the saber staff. Norris. What are you doing with that? Anna finally realized what Norris had meant. Anna. Oh, I was looking for you at the lab when someone pulled the fire alarm, and since no one bothered to secure the prototype, I grabbed it to keep it safe. Norris' eyes narrowed as she crossed her arms. Norris. Did you pull the fire alarm? Anna tried to look hurt, but her acting wouldn't have fooled a five-year-old. Anna. I would never. Norris raised an eyebrow. 
Anna stopped overacting and answered truthfully. Anna. No, seriously, I didn't do it. What's so different about this thing anyway? Norris would have strong words with the chief of security tomorrow, but for now she will try to explain the difference to Anna again. Norris. The old model was basically a plasma cutter with a force field. This is actually a laser sword. Anna nodded, seeming to understand. Anna. Right, I don't get it. Norris shook her head. Norris. The old model used a continuous stream of plasma to generate what is basically a superheated chainsaw. The new model creates a laser beam thinner than a human hair. This way it can be used in precision work as a tool, while being just as deadly in melee combat. Anna. Do people really use them as tools? Norris. Kinda. It's just the official excuse. In reality we developed the Anarosa because people wanted a lightsaber that used colored crystals. The fact you can't change the color of the plasma blade irked a lot of people for some reason. Anna understood the feeling and nodded earnestly. Anna. So this thing has a kyber crystal in it. Norris was going to correct her, explaining how it was actually a perfectly faceted, with exceptional clarity, synthetic diamond, but gave up. Norris. Sure. Before the conversation could continue, the door to their apartment burst into splinters. Norris dove into cover behind the sofa, and then popped up from behind it long enough to drag Anna by her blonde hair. Anna. That hurts. Norris. Get down, moron. Six individuals, armed with plasma rifles entered the room. The leader, or at least the man taking point, spoke. Leader, give us the prototype, and we let you live. Anna smiled at hearing this. Anna, computer, play Duel of Fates. She then slowly came out of cover, and ignited one blade of the saber staff, then the second one, or at least, that was the plan. Anna dove back into cover, as the men started to open fire. Anna, it's out of batteries. Norris. It's not functional yet. Why do you think I want to steal it? Anna. The frack you mean. Norris. Intergalactic law is very specific, you can only patent a working prototype. The shooting stopped abruptly. Leader. I'll ask again, give us the prototype, you're already rich enough, it's not worth dying over. Norris. Here's my counter offer. Computer. Launch Special Project X. A pillar in the living room opened up, the six armed men began firing, not wanting to meet whatever was going to come out of there. Anna. What did you build? Norris grinned. Norris. A droid. Anna. Seriously. Was it one of them? Roger Roger once. Norris. Better. Anna. Oh I know, a droid Ika. Norris. Better. Anna smile, seemingly sure she found the answer. Anna. An IG unit. Norris. Better. Anna was stumped. Anna. What is better than an IG unit? The gunmen had stopped firing by now, they had thoroughly destroyed whatever was inside the pillar. At least they hoped so. Anyway, they had to wait for the dust to settle, they couldn't see anything right now. Then two yellow eyes shone from inside the dust cloud. Query. Should I eliminate the undesirables? Norris. Engage assassination protocols. HK-51. Confirmed. The droid then picked a magnetized sniper rifle from his back and began to shoot. Norris beamed a triumphant smile at Anna, who looked worried. Anna. Um. It's not psychotic, right? Norris. Of course not, I programmed him myself. The shooting didn't last long, and when Anna looked up, she saw the last surviving would-be thief, running for his life around the barely still standing pillar, HK unit hot on his heels, dagger in hand. HK-51. Statement. You're already dead. Just lie down. Thief. I surrender. 
This went on for a few seconds. Anna. I feel bad for him, maybe we should take him into custody. Norris. He tried to steal from me. Anna. And he also tried to kill me. Norris. No one steals from me. Anna frowned. Anna. Did you not hear me? Norris looked at Anna, then back at the chase in their living room. Norris. No one. HK-51. Declaration. Target locked, death imminent. The droid had managed to pin the man down and lifted his dagger high above his head. Thief. Please, I'll talk. Anna gave Norris the dreaded, puppy eyes of coercion. Norris. Fine, you win. HK disengage from combat. HK-51. Query. But I kill to serve. Norris. I said no. The HK unit put the dagger back into its sheath and made what could only be described as sad robot noises. They later found out that the thieves had been the ones to pull the fire alarm and had paid Norris's chief of security to let them into the lab. And Anna had accidentally thwarted their plan by taking the prototype home. Then they threatened the security chief into cutting their apartment from the network and tried to rob them at gunpoint. The private military company behind the attempted intellectual theft went bankrupt after the trial, and its board of directors met with untimely, accidental deaths, one after another. Half a year later, the Anarissa lightsaber was replaced by the Anarosa model for use in Terran military, and the HK units became a huge hit with VIPs around the sector. Author's name and the link to original text is in the description.